Oh, guys, 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 and gals. Woo. That is burning some sage here real quick. Empaths. Empaths, light workers, healers. Yes, let's let, let's talk here. Let's talk here. A lot of you are, a lot of you know it, some of you don't. You have a gift. You do have a gift. The people can feel it way before they probably know what the hell it is. Some people be, what the hell's an empath? What the hell's a light worker? What the hell is this about? Daddy John, what's this about? You're just naturally a healing person. You have a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. And it can also be a curse at the same at the same token. You gotta figure out the best way to use it and use it to your advantage. Okay. You're naturally healing to people. You're naturally kind and generous and loving. That's your nature. At the end of the day, that's always going to be your nature. Some people can't understand it. Some people don't understand it. Some people are, oh, how can they be so nice? How can they do this? How can they do that? And, you know, empaths and light workers, they are. We are very kind, loving, gentle people. But at the same token... We can also handle ourselves too. That's why you gotta learn your gifts and how to not get taken advantage of. And you know, the biggest threat to everybody out there nowadays is narcissist and narcissist. Woo! They're everywhere. They're everywhere. I got a narcissistic mother. And you know what, guys? I'm 46. It took me a hell of a long time to realize that. You have to learn with your energy how to deal and how to handle with narcissists. And then, you know, once you once you figure it out one, once you learn how to deal with the narcissist, you're going to be able to shut them down. You're going to be able to shut them down. You can tell the passive aggressiveness. You, 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 you can just pinpoint the behaviors. Because you know, there's some people you can't let go of in your life. As much as you want to, you just can't say, fuck it, I ain't dealing with your ass anymore. Now, strangers and other people, you know, you can put them aside and not ever have to deal with them, right? Or deal with them at arm's length when you do. But when it's close family members and people like that, some of you are probably married narcissist or dating narcissist. As if you're an empath and light worker because they love the energy feed. They love your energy. They can feed off of it. And at the end of the day, their main goal is to try to destroy it because they don't like it. You're everything they're not. You're everything the narcissist isn't, and they don't like it. But I highly recommend, and if you're drawn to my channel, you're probably a uh, empath light worker. Check out some of the videos on YouTube. And you know, guys, let me tell you, anytime you're watching a video, if you're watching tarot readings, anything along that lines, whatever you're drawn to, if something triggers you, don't keep watching it. And then you got to pay attention to why you keep getting triggered by something. That's very important, okay? Because if, you, if something is triggering, then you're not over it. There's still some more healing you got to do. You know, uh, no matter what aspect or arena of your life this is dealing with. And... Trust where you're being guided. If you all haven't recognized that spirit is leading you, spirit is trying to talk to you, spirit is giving you the signs, you really need to start paying attention. You got to put your intentions out there. Universe, I'm open to receive the blessings you have to offer. Ask your angels, your spirit guides for assistance. They cannot help you if you don't vocalize that you need help. Now, no, they're not going to swoop down and pick you up and take you where you need to be. Just ask for guidance. Spirit guides, angels, keep me on the right path. Let me know which direction I need to take. Help me stay on course. They can't help you if you don't ask. But you got to be paying attention to the signs. Synchronization. What are you noticing in, in, in excerpts from books or movies or what's catching your attention? Or if you overhear a conversation that seems to pinpoint uh, accuracy in a situation in your life. You know, pay attention. They'll, they'll, put, they'll put it out there. 
but it's up to you to do the work and you constantly have to be doing the work. This is a betterment. This is like self-improvement. Okay, but this is better than a self-help book because you don't have to pay any money to do this. You just set your intentions out there, even just saying them out loud, vocalizing them. Hear it. Tell your story. Hear yourself say shit out loud. Sometimes just saying it out loud, just admitting it out loud will help you get over it faster. Because when you hear it, I think in one of my past videos, I said, uh, tell a stranger your story and, and look at the look on their face that they get. You know, when, when you put your situation, whatever you're going through, work, love, life guides out there and you really look at it from an honest perspective, then you get the clarity you need. Because this is all about healing. You got to heal yourself because empath and light workers are going to be leading the charge. You have to be able, it's about being able to calm the masses. You know, people that have a, a soothing demeanor about them that just automatically put you at ease. People that you just feel comfortable around. People that are able to, to they just kind of put an ease to any anxiety that you have or any fears. A lot of nurses are really good empaths, light workers, because they're, they're able to calm. They're able to calm you without maybe you even realizing what's going on. That, that, that's a very important, it's a very important and valuable tool in your arsenal. And it's a very important, valuable gift to society. And a lot of empaths and light workers find their way into professions that are actually helpful, especially in the uh, field of psychology, psychiatry. You know, they're able to, to affect in a way that's a little more... How do I want to put it? It's more than just what their their intellectual capacity is in dealing with the situation. It's like a, the, the underlying energy kind of works with the words, if you know what I mean. It, and it, it's a very, it's a very kind of a spiritual type transaction. Yes, the, their intellect and their knowledge guides the process, but it's that underlying ability and that, that just that, that peacefulness. You know, if you go see a shrink, or a therapist. It's very important that you get someone that you're comfortable with. There has to be a rapport. You have to feel like you, there's a, a nice energy exchange, a comfort level. A comfort level is very important. Because so many people will put themselves or keep themselves in a situation where they don't have that comfort level to fully relax and open up and get, get the full blessings and benefits from what's being offered. Even when it comes to preachers. You know, it's very hard to find a preacher that you like, a preacher that you feel uh, a, a connection to, that, that you, you're vibing on the same energy level. You know what I mean? You can like the words and all that, but who 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 do you feel that energetic connection with? This is about the energy pool. Because being an empath, you will know the people instinctually you have to stay away from. It's like little babies, little children and animals. They know people that's got like some bad juju on them. They know people you shouldn't fuck around with. If a child don't like them or an animal don't like them, you don't need to be around them. Because they're open and they're very perceptive to that energy long before they know what the hell it's about. It's like an automatic uh, a fear instinct in them, right? They already know to be protected from this person because they, the, they can feel the negative juju. So empaths and light workers. And I'm saying this and doing this on a beautiful day. Guys, I've been trying to do readings, and I tell you what, I have scrapped so many because it's the same mother-loving energy coming up. The daddy just don't like it. We need more love and light in this world, and we need to see what we need to be working on to focus on that. And if you're drawn to me, okay, all 29 subscribers that I have, if you're drawn here, there's a reason. There's a reason. We're on about the same path. We're on the same soul tribe. It's an energy exchange. And if you don't feel that energy exchange, then maybe, you know, this isn't your channel. I'm trying to follow my life path, figure out what direction spirit would like me to go with, uh, with my life and the gifts that I have to offer. The world, healing, nurturing, empowering. I want you to feel empowered, okay? The end of any reading, I want you to feel empowered. That's why I'm going to tell you at any point in time, you're the one in power. You're the one in control. You're the one to make the decisions. Do not allow someone else to have that control over you. If someone wants to come back, that don't mean your ass has to take them back, okay? 
you're not obliged to do anything if it's going to inflict or interfere with your energy and your vibration and your path forward. It's either going to propel you forward or they're just going to hold your ass back. You should always be moving forward. You should always be looking within and trying to figure out the best way to better yourself because there's always room for improvement. There's always room to... to um, oh, what, what am I trying to say? To uh, hone in your crafts and your abilities. And it's like, it's like a collective thing, right? You can take what you naturally do or what you have to do for a profession but still figure out how to make it work in the long term for the benefits uh, for the benefits of a collective whole for people around you for people around you you know some people are able to teach you know if you're at work and you have to train people some people are better teachers than others they know how to get in there and they know how to you know teach and, you know, they can kind of size a person up and, and, and figure out how that person needs to be taught. Because everyone learns on a different level. Everyone progresses at a different rate. But you have to kind of be able to hone in on how someone needs to be trained. What, what, what's the best process? A lot of teaching energy, guys. Empaths and healers are going to be leading and teaching and trying to help people find their light, find their inner strength, and find that, that, oh, that, that little extra oomph in your life, that little extra push that makes what you do all that more enticing, okay? I ask that the powers of be watch over me during this reading. You all know how I see and read. Please help me interpret these cards as you see fit. I call upon Archangel Michael to come in and protect as I read from my collective, we're talking about empaths, light workers, and healers. Spirit, what advice messages do you have regarding this? God protects me. God fights my battles. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. My energy is pure, whole, and light. Any misuse of my energy against my free will is binded. What have we got for you, light workers? What's the mission? Judgment. The sun. Justice. Nine of Cups. The magician. Judgment in the upright. The sun card. Justice in the upright. Nine of Cups in the upright. With the magician. Covering the top of this. The magician in reverse. So judgment. Karma. Judgment as above, so below. In God's eyes, in a judge's eyes. Judgment. Putting yourself out there. Willingly taking the judgment for your actions, whatever you do. You have no secrets because you face the judgment for whatever you do. You live a life that is and not gonna be I'm not it's not judgment free. But it is what the hell it is. You're not worried about how things are going to come up. You live your life and you're free. And you will take whatever judgment comes your way. You're not one to shy away just because of it might not be the norm. It might not be what everyone else would like you to be. It's not what society might consider a norm. You're living your true light. This is also Gabriel calling you out. Calling you out for good. But Gabriel can also call your ass out for bad. This can be a card of reconciliation. We'll see how this comes into play here, guys. The sun. At the end of the day, you ultimately want to be happy. And this is internally happy. This is happy on your own. So often we get drawn to this belief that we have to have somebody. We have to have a partner around in order to find pure happiness. That's not always the case. You have to be happy and in love with yourself. Then the right person will come in and you guys will both be a match because you will both be happy, independent people in your own right. So when you come together, you're not going to have some toxic push and pull. One person isn't going to be the needy one and then just take, 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 take it. It's a 50-50 mix. You both empower each other. Yeah, there's still that give and take, but it's kind of like an equal it's um 
it's a beautiful exchange, right? You both keep each other charged up. It's like you're both fucking charging each other while you're doing it. And you're learning in the process because where one might be weak, the other one is strong. And it's kind of a whole teaching thing. But you're both independently strong and happy on your own. You can't go into a relationship if you're broken and unhealed. Because you're just going to carry all that shit with you into the next relationship. And that person's going to have to be uh, playing a, a double time to uh, catch up for what the hell the person left you did because you haven't done the healing. That comes back to your ass. You have to have your shit together. Or any relationship you get into holds the burden of being toxic. This is all about happiness. Living your life, living your truth. You will take whatever judgment comes your way. Good or bad. It is what it is. You'll face the judgment in the eyes of the Lord. You'll face the judgment in the eyes of a judge. You live in your truth. So you live your truth. You take judgment on your truth. You take judgment on your actions. You do what you have to do. As above, so below. But at the end of the day, it's all about your internal happiness. Justice in the upright, nine of cups. Again, dealing with uh, uh, the court of law, the, the God's judgment. At the end of the day, we all face judgment. Now this is balance, scales getting balanced out, truth coming in. At the end of the day, the truth always wins out. It can be manipulated for a little while. It can be distorted. It can be misused and abused. But at the end of the day, the truth always wins. Because what isn't done or rectified in the eyes of the Lord or in the court of law, someone's got personal judgment. Some people, some people fear this. Some people fear judgment. They don't like it. They, they got to conform to society. They don't want to stick out. They don't want to do anything that's going to make them feel like they are a target. Others, you take it for what it is. The Lord made me this way. I'm going to live in my power. And you know what? If I'm wrong, I'll face that judgment when I die. You're not really worried about it. Your faith is in the above and in the justice system. Nine of Cups, wish fulfillment. Going after what you want. Figuring out what your personal happiness is. This, again, is a single card. This person finds their own wish fulfillment. This is chasing your dreams, going after what you want. This isn't pinning your hopes and dreams and your wish fulfillment on someone coming into your life. You go after what it is you want. Now, sometimes with the judgment and the justice here, sometimes it's hard figuring out what your wish fulfillment actually is. You know, to be quite honest, it could be in law enforcement. It could be in the religious sector. It could be a mixture of both. What is your wish fulfillment? What is your wish fulfillment? What would you do if you could do what you truly loved? And maybe you're struggling with that right now, right? I mean, daddy's got his, uh, you know, his regular job that pays the bills, but I'm trying to figure out the other areas in which I'm finding interesting to get some side hustles going that maybe someday might prove to be full-time careers. Now, the trick is, and even from my perspective, I, there's a couple different areas. So it's like, uh, that's why I continually ask for guidance into which areas I need to put my time and energy into. What area is it that I should be drawn into because the judgment and justice is guidance, guidance from above, right? What can you do to bring peace and balance and harmony to the world? In what avenue can you do that? In what avenue is that going to kind of go into your wish fulfillment? The tarot readings come about by accident. I'll be truly honest with you, but in the same token, I love it. Because you can use this as a stepping stone to, to move on. 
But eventually, you're going to move away from it because you're not going to need it. Because at the end of the day, and, and most of the good tarot readers out there, now there's so many out there, and, and your know, tarot readings are for entertainment purposes only, okay? We all know that. You should know that. When you watch it, it is for entertainment purposes only. You will get to a point when you don't need it. Because any good tarot reader will tell you, you're eventually going to learn to trust your own intuition. You are eventually going to learn that you have the ability to basically divinate. You, you'll be able to see the, the towers that's coming. You'll be able to notice the toxic people in your life. You won't need a tarot reading because you will already know this. And I encourage anybody to pick you up a deck and learn to use it. Because it's about trusting your intuition. This is about getting in touch with your spirit guides. We're all born with a guardian angel. Y'all, We all got someone around there that, that's, that's assigned to us to watch us through our life. Now, it's your job to keep that line of communication open. To keep yourself open to a higher frequency. If anything else, it's a higher... Oh, guys, I just looked out the window and a shit ton of snow came off the neighbor's roof. Yeah, uh, you have to learn to, to keep that connection open. Because when you connect on that level, your vibration is so high that you're naturally going to repel a lot of shit, a lot of negativity that might come your way. Work, love, life. You're going to get drawn to the things you need to, to study or read up on to learn how to protect yourself in the end. Protect yourself from toxic people. Protect yourself from toxic situations. So the tarot came about rather interesting. It was kind of a side effect, but this is kind of where I've been drawn because it's bringing me closer to my spirit guides, the, the, raising my vibrational level and learning to trust my instincts, my intuition, and bring out the fact that, yes, you know, I have empathic healing powers. Uh, it, it is something that you, when you finally realize it, then you realize a lot of the, the past relationships and different things in your life. I mean, going back years. Daddy's 46, so, you know, we've been out of school for like 27 years. So we got some history here. And I can tell from the past, things that I did in my 20s, relationships, and the same struggles, and etc., how that all works out. <clears throat> but it's using it to figure out your wish fulfillment. In the end... Your ability to live your life free of judgment. Because any judgment comes, you're going to take it and there you go. Right? As above, so below. And finding your happiness. Now, just off the top of these cards, guys, there could be a judgment in the court of law that actually leads to someone's happiness and someone getting their wish fulfillment in the end. You know, not all not all bad things are bad for you in the end. Sometimes not getting what you want is actually a blessing. You understand? You got to learn to trust your instinct. Trust your gut, man. I, I love it when you see them, the little memes. Your gut instincts are your angels protecting you. And your gut instinct, 99.9% .9 of the time, is always going to be right. So go with your gut first. If you get on the situation or something arises and you got to think about it, trust the first fucking thought that comes into your mind. If you're dealing with something and the first thing you think is, oh shit, then you probably shouldn't do it, right? Trust your gut, trust your instincts. That's what you need to be learning from tarot readings. Anybody has this gift. Everybody is born with it. We are all connected. We're all connected. You got to open up the line of communication. You got to let the universe and spirit know that you are open to receive. So that way you can navigate towards life. And you, you, you'll you just instinctually know. You know, when people start coming towards you, you'll be able to size them up and you will know who you have to hold at an arm's length. You will recognize when situations are coming up and you got a snake in the grass. You'll realize this. And it'll be second nature. You won't have to sit there and, and question it. Or when you do have a question, you ask the spirit guides, you ask your angels, you pray on it at night for guidance and clarity on it. And you will get the uh, you will you will get the downloads that you need.
Thank you, Spirit. <laughs> the magician. I was wondering what this magician in reverse was for. There's stagnation because it's divinely guided. If you're stuck in a situation, you need to ask yourself, what am I not learning from this? What am I not seeing? I don't know how many times I've said it. Uh, that is my biggest question. I don't care what the hell I'm doing. If I'm at work working on something or if I'm working on a fucking vehicle, if, if I'm just stuck in life, okay, spirit, what am I not seeing? What am I not seeing, God? What am I not seeing? Spirit's like, it's not time yet to manifest what you want. So over this situation, you're being stuck for a reason. Spirit is keeping you stuck. And I, I use stuck very loosely. You're in, your, you're, you're, you're in this state of limbo for a reason. Spirit wants to move you forward, but there's still some lessons you need to learn. Something you need to, there's a lesson. There's still a lesson that you haven't learned. That's why I said, if you're watching a reading and something triggers you, figure out why you're being triggered. You got to figure out what your triggers are. And, and that involves every aspect of your life, okay? If you got eating problems, daddy will admit, I love my fucking chocolate, you know? And I haven't been able to, thanks to COVID and and, you know, other reasons. I haven't been able to get to the gym. I haven't had a decent fucking workout in probably two months. And it's it's killing me. The weather's shit outside. I don't want to go out and get sick. You know, I work in a freezer anyway at work. So I'm constantly cold. The last thing I want to do is get out in fucking 15 degree weather and try to exercise. My poor dog. We haven't been on a walk in for hell and ever. So I'm ready for the weather to break so daddy can get out there and get the blood fucking pumping. But I got to watch my love of chocolate and desserts. So, you know, and it's a triggering thing. I realize that a sedentary life leads to bad choices in food. So eating healthier, right? What's your triggers? What triggers you to do the negative things? I know I need to quit smoking, but hell, I heard that people that smoke cigarettes are less likely to catch COVID. So, you know what? I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Tell it's time for me to put these down. When it's time for me to put these down, I know I'll be guided to do it and it will be easy. So, you know, we, we take things as they come, guys. You can't change your whole life overnight and think it's going to stick. There's actually work when it comes to changes. What is the old saying? You have to do something 21 times before it becomes a pattern. Yeah. So there you go. You're in this situation. You're stuck, quote unquote, stuck because there's still something you need to learn before you can move on and get the blessings that are coming. Now, I'm talking to people that's living in the light. Now, if you're out here trying to hook and crook people and do negative and, and, and you know, wish harm on people and all this other shit, this ain't the energy you're vibing in. Right? These are people that's doing the work. You've probably been through some shit, and there definitely is, is some injustice in here. There's definitely some shit that's going to get settled or worked out. The truth is going to come out, and, and the scales are going to get balanced. Okay, two of cups in reverse. Page of pentacles in reverse. Okay. Perhaps there is a situation you're dealing with. Someone... That perhaps you owe an apology to, or they owe you an apology to. We got the Two of Cups in reverse here. Now, the Two of Cups, guys, it can be a love relationship. It can also just be friends, family, co-workers. Uh, uh, relationships in your life that aren't on the best of terms. And with the Page of Pentacles here being in reverse, maybe there's some apologies that need to be made. Maybe there's some healing that needs to be done, okay? But there's still, I'm still getting, there's still work that needs to be done. There's still things you're not seeing. Things have to balance out. It's like, uh, you know, when the will of fortune shows up, that's divine timing. So you might as well just sit your ass down, keep doing what you're doing, and, and quit worrying about something. Because you're on God's time. You're on the universe's time. And they, they're not linear like we are when it comes to time. So when that happens, you just got to keep moving forward, doing good, working on yourself, learning and processing and going and, and growing. 
You should always be growing and learning something. Always growing and learning something. So when it comes to this relationship, like I said, guys, work, love, life. Not everything's about love. There very well could be some apologies that need to be made. Maybe on both parties, right? And maybe the healing with this is, is learning that. But at the same token, you're also learning how to deal with people. So, you know, you give forgiveness, not for them. Forgiveness is for you. And at the end of the day, this person don't even have to know that you fucking forgave them. You know, you don't have to tell a person you forgave them. Forgiveness is for you. That's so you can release the toxicity and, and put it to rest and, and not let it keep being a trigger for you. You get that? So there's probably some things you need to work out. And guys, this could be in many different areas of your life. A lot of us going through these uh, life lessons and things, you could have three or four relationships that, you know, people that you had to just fucking step the, back, step the fuck back from because you realized their toxicity. And this could very well even be having to deal with toxic people in your life. You know you can't just dismiss them. But you also know if you're going to deal with them, you got to be able to do it in a healthy manner. This is so you learn. Look up anything on narcissists because you're probably dealing with the narcissist. Okay? How to deal with the narcissist. How to spot a narcissist. How to counteract a narcissist. How to, how to spot passive aggressive behavior. So this is you learning. Okay. Okay. I got to deal with you. This person has got to be in your life. You know, this is like a, a no option. Like I said, friends, family, work. So you're going to figure out how to navigate this road so you can keep this person around, but still keep your energy protected. <laughs> the Empress, guys. And yeah, don't pay attention to the sex of the cards, fellas, because the Empress... It's very important that everyone have a, a good, healthy mix of masculine and feminine energy in them. And men, when the Empress cards come out, or a feminine card comes out in a reading, that just means you're going to be more on that nurturing, loving, giving birth type energy. You know, the male energy is about protecting and, and being strong and, and defensive and all this. But when the feminine energy comes out, that's letting you know that you have the ability to create, to love and nurture and, and watch something grow from infancy into adulthood. It's a very beautiful energy and you have to have a healthy mix of masculine and feminine in your energy field. Women, the same with you. You can be all kind, nurturing, and loving, but you also have to be able to turn into masculine mode and protect what the hell you've worked for. You know what I mean? So you have to have a healthy mix of masculine and feminine. But the Empress showing up, you have all the skills you need to manifest and do what you need to do. And a lot of it's going to be like, you know, honing in on your empathic abilities, your light working skills, your ability to put people at ease, your ability to connect to people on a different level. It's going to be very important. You know, when, when situations get rough and, and people can get into panic mode, you're going to need people that can calm people the fuck down and going to be able to, to put people at ease. And with the Empress energy here, you kind of get that with that mothering, nurturing type energy. Being able to, you know, make a person feel safe and, and protected and know that yeah, yeah uh, the, it's, um, I don't know, it's being able to, to create that, that sense of comfort, almost like you're create, you're able to create an artificial womb so someone can feel protected and grow and, and learn the lesson that needs to be learned. You see what I mean? Beautiful energy, guys. Spirit is definitely up in this. But a lot of this is to let you know if you are feeling stuck in a situation, spirits like there is there's still some work here. I'm really thinking you're you're dealing with a partnership or partnerships relationships, not necessarily love guys, in which you have to have this person in your life. But at the same token, you gotta be able to protect yourself from this person in the sense that. They are energy vampires. They will try to continually keep you down. Even though you are the empress, this is a person that wants to keep you down, that always wants to have control over you. Definitely a, a very narcissistic feel to this, right? 
So your spirit's like, no, you got to master this situation. You got, you're going to have to learn how, how to deal with these toxic people or people that can become toxic pretty quick in your life and still be able to go move forward and do what you need to do. This is about you honing in on your empathic skills and being able to use the energy that you have to protect not only yourself, but keep those around that you have to and still have a working relationship. Like I said, this could be with friends, family, children, grandchildren, spouse, whoever the hell you're dealing with, that you know you have to have them in your life. You can't just disregard them. So it's how do you deal with them on a healthy level? But you got the ability right here. The Empress, you're standing in your power. And the Empress is a softer energy. This is someone... That isn't going to come in and try to just dictate. You know, no one wants to be told what the fuck to do. If the emperor come in and just thinks, well, this is the way I say it's done. So you're going to do this, this, this. Someone's going to say, fuck you, kiss my ass. I don't think so. The empress energy, you're able to put people at ease and, and kind of, uh, it's not bend to your will. But in an essence, you're able to put their guard down enough that they're going to come in and, and be able to benefit from your knowledge and your skills and your ability. It's a very loving, nurturing kind energy. And people are going to pick up on it. Like I said, male or female, guys. It's, it's the energy of the card. It's that mothering, nurturing capability that you have. It's beautiful energy. And spirit wants you to know that. If you're feeling stuck or trapped, it's because there's something you need to learn. There's still something you need to learn. And it's learning how to use your skill and your gift in situations that might not be the best for you, but it's so you can protect yourself and still keep the lines of communication open with people that you might not want to. You know what I mean? We didn't read the bottom of the deck. Four of wands in reverse, nine of wands. Yeah, okay, at the end of the day. Four of wands in reverse, nine of wands in reverse. Definitely a, a, a situation, a foundation. Like I said, guys, work, love, life. You're going to be learning to put your guard down. How do I want to put this? You're going to put your guard down, but you're going to be able to do that because instinctually you're going to know how to deal with this person. You're never going to let someone cross the line. So you're able to come in and, and still be your normal self because you know as soon as someone tries to cross that line, it's instinctually going to come up and you're going to be able to protect yourself and, and put the boundary up. You know, you're not going to let someone cross the line that doesn't need to be. Because there's definitely some healing that needs to go on in a situation here, in a relationship. And like I said, guys, this could be work, love, life. Dealing with people on, on a day-to-day -day basis and some people that you know you really don't want to be around. And if you could never have a conversation with them again, that would be fine with you in your life. But for whatever reason, you still got to deal with this person. Okay, I'm getting baby mama, baby daddy energy as well. You know, you might not be together with this person, but you still got to interact because there's children involved. Or a grandparent situation with a grandchild. Or a mother and father situation with a child. You know what I mean? Or dealing with your parents. It's a, it's a relationship that you have to have. You just can't disregard it. But it's teaching you how to navigate those waters. Because it's like you're going to... It's that sixth sense. As soon as you, you get that feeling that someone's going to take advantage of you. Or, or they're using the, the narcissistic powers that they carry... It's going to be like, that's just instinctually going to come up. It's going to be just a natural sense you have. It's going to be like your superpower. Anytime you feel that infringement on your energy, you're going to be able to put up your guard and protect yourself. It's a very beautiful energy. And not this ain't about physical altercations, guys. This is about energy. This is about your energy. And people trying to take advantage of you. Because at the end of the day, motherfucker, you're the goddamn empress in the sun. With judgment here, justice here, damn nine of cups. You're going to get everything that you want plus some. But spirits like you, we still got to teach you how to navigate this aspect of your gifts, your talents, your abilities. So no matter what arena you're thrown into, you are going to be able to come out ahead. 
and always be protected. But the key thing is, yeah, thank you, Spirit. They still want you to know you're still going to be your kind, loving, generous self. Spirit just needs to hone this, this, this gift in to teach you that you can still be your same self and know that once you learn the trigger signs and trust your energy, you're going to be able to, to, to throw up them defenses when you need to and not just be closed off to the world and closed off to other energies coming by you. Very beautiful energy, guys. And yes, at the end of the day, it all comes down to divine timing. So when you get the divine timing card, you know what? Don't you you can't put a time limit on this. I can't tell you, oh, two months from now it's all gonna be great. Six months from now it's all gonna be great. You're on God's time. You're on the universe's time. So the universe is saying, you keep doing you, you keep working on what you're doing, you're gonna hone these skills. Because it's basically you're honing your skills, you're getting some lessons. But these are lessons for you personally to help you navigate life in a far more peaceful uh, way. Because it's like you're going to hone that sixth sense. So as soon as you start feeling that someone's coming in to take advantage of you, boom. I, I'm getting like bad ears. <laughs> They're gonna, your, your ears are going to perk up and you're going to know. It's like you're going to get like an audible alarm in your head that's going to say nut, toxic, Throw the guard up so you can stay protected. Because spirit wants you to be you in the end. They don't want you to lose that which makes you you. Because then, you know, you'd just be a bitter, upset person like half the world out there. Spirit still wants you in your power. <coughs> doing what you do. Doing how you do it. Being an open, loving, kind, generous empress that you are. Birthing and nurturing and... And, and helping who you can, healing who you can through you through what you do, whatever means that is, whatever means that is for you. But it's like you're getting your your you get spidey senses. By my, it's like you're getting your spidey senses. Okay, so this is like a a, a holding point to hone your skills. Think of it as like a um, God. What do they call it in acting school when they teach you how to fight? Pretend fight. Oh, what the hell do they call it? Should I, I forget. I forget. It, it's kind of like that. Spirit's keeping you in this until you learn how to navigate these situations and trust your instincts. Like that, he says, trust your instincts. You got to open up that connection to the spirit world. Now, that don't mean your ass has to walk into a church. I'm not talking about that. Daddy is more spiritual than what he is religious. This is about keeping your connection open and vibing on a higher energy level. So, you know, you know, your instincts, your guardian angel up there will help guide you. So you can do you and be you and be the fine, loving, uh, you know, free, independent spirit that you are. Just know that when you need protection, it's like that spidey sense is going to come up. And, you know, you're not going to get surprised by the snake in the grass. You know what I mean? Beautiful energy, guys. Peace, love, and light. Peace, love, and light. May this be a wonderful Mercury retrograde for you.